Okay, this is Richmond, and today's tutorial is on the rules of differentiation. And I'll just go quickly so that we tackle the rules of differentiation and see how we can apply them to solve questions. Okay, the first rule is like this one. If y is equal to f of x, meaning y is equal to the function of f of x, and then is equal to, let's say, x to the power n. And then for this one, you need to find a basic rule to differentiate this one. So dy dx of this one is going to be, if I ask to find the dy dx of this one, that's x to the power n, it's going to be something like this. The n here being the exponent will fall back and multiply the x. So it's going to be n multiplied by x. And then the exponent, we subtract one from it. This is basically the first rule. Let's take the second rule and see if y is equal to a constant here, a x to the power n. All that we need to do is that our dy, the x, is going to be here. You write the n here will fall back and multiply the everything here. So you're going to get n multiplying a x here. And then the n on top, we subtract 1 from the n. And then that's what we have for the second one, if actually we differentiate the second one. So let's take the third one and see how it's going to be. If we have, let's say, two terms, a raised to the power x to the power n here, plus, let's say, b x to the power m. And then we are asked to find dy dx. So we say that dy dx of this expression is going to be something like this. Half of dy dx is equal to, the a is a constant. We don't differentiate the constant. So we differentiate um, the x to the power n. So we put them here, x to the power n here. And then plus b, and then we differentiate the x to the power m like this. Okay, so now we are done here. So x raised to the power and means that according to the first rule, the n will fall back and multiply uh, x. So the same thing here. So the n will fall back and multiply x. That's what we finished with the differentiation of the x to the power n. And the a is here, so a will also multiply. So everything is going to be like this. So if the n falls back and multiply x, the same as n falling back and multiplying the constant. So we say n, a, x, and then the n, because the n just multiply the x. And we know that n multiply x can be written as n, a, x, or a, n, x. Okay, so we write it this way, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, like this. All right, so we subtract 1. From the exponent, okay, something like this. So, and then we move on to the second term and do the same thing. So we have the b there, it's a constant, so we write our b, and then the m we just fall back and multiply the x. So we're going to get m, and then we get x here, and then the m we subtract one from it. And this is going to be the second term, the the third rule. If we are having terms coming together, we differentiate them uh, differently and we put them together. With this knowledge, then let's take some questions to see how we can find the derivative or the gradient function of the questions. So the question one is y is equal to five. So we have to find the dy dx of this as a function. So dy dx, that you should know, is just a gradient function of the derivative of the function. So dy dx of y is equal to 5 is going to be like this. And the one thing that you should know that whenever you differentiate a constant equal to 0, and I'm going to prove it here right now. So y is equal to 5 can be written as the same as y is equal to 5x raised to the power 0. You know that in the law of indices, any number raised to the power 0 is 1. 1 times 5 gives us 5. So now we can say that dy dx of 5 times x to the power 0 is already coming to find the derivative. So now, 
let's move and see so 5 x to the power 0 is going to be in finding the derivative the 0 will fall back and multiply the constant so it's going to be 0 times the constant 5 and write the x raised power 0 we subtract 1 from the exponent like this so you are going to get 0 times everything here because 0 multiply everything you get 0 so whenever I differentiate the constant is 0 and it will be proven in this question now let's take the next question and see how best we can solve it okay so the question is very simple and it's y is a function is equal to 4x okay so let's find dy dx of this function and to find the dy dx of this function we just need to know that whenever we are finding the, uh, the differentiation 4x is can be written as 4x raised power 1 because whenever we write a variable without any exponent it means that it's having an exponent of 1 so the law the first rule is saying that this one here being exponent should fall back and multiply the constant so you're going to get 1 times 4 and you write x here exponent 1 here and subtract 1 from it okay and then after subtract 1 from it you're going to get 0 so 4 x to the power 0 and any number raised to the power 0 in indices is 1 1 and 4 will give us 4 here so that is the solution for this question let's take the next question and see how we can also solve it the next question is like this is y is equal to 1 over x and then we have to find dy dx and the dy dx of let's say dy dx of 1 over x can be written as we can change the 1 over x to this form x to the power 1 is the same as 1 over x in the law of indices so we are now to find the y the x of x to the power negative 1 and we know that this negative 1 should fall back and multiply the x so we're going to get minus 1 times x raised to the power 1 and we subtract 1 from the exponent so minus 1 there okay so let's see negative 1 times x will give us minus x and then minus 1 minus 1 give us minus 2 and with this I can write in this way that negative 1 negative x raised to the power 2 is the same as negative 1 over x raised to the power 2 like this okay so this is the solution to this question let's move on to the next one and see how we can also solve it so the next question is like this is y is equal to minus 6x 2 like this so let's find the dy dx the dy dx is now equal this this negative this 2 here will fall back and multiply the constant here so you're going to get minus 6 multiplied by 2 and then you have x here raised to power 2 and you subtract 1 from it like this so now negative 6 times 2 will give us minus 12 okay and then 2 minus 1 will give us just 1 so get x here and this is the solution for this question so we are continuing let's take the next question and then let's see how we can deal with that question and it's 3x cube plus 4x squared minus 5 like this 
And because there are three terms here, we need to find the derivative of each term. Okay. And then what I said earlier on is that we don't differentiate the constant. So we write a constant 3 and we find the derivative of x raised power 3. So x raised power 3 here. So plus 4. And then we find the derivative of x squared. And then minus 5. And one thing that I need to tell you is that whenever you differentiate a constant, is zero so I can do here let's find the derivative of x to the power zero I know that when you differentiate this one if you differentiate this one it causes this one the whole of this one to become zero and then the reason why I brought x to the power zero means that any number raised to the power zero is one so I just attach it to a five so that I can differentiate and prove that the reason why when you differentiate a constant is zero all right, so let's continue and see how we can do it. So now we have, so it means that the three, we are not doing anything to the three, we differentiate the x cube. So differentiate the x cube, it means that three will fall back, and when the three fall back, and then we subtract one from the exponent, that's the differentiation. So the three will fall back and come and multiply the three here. So we have three times three, got three already. And then we write our x raised power three, we subtract one from the exponent so we are done with the first term second term right four and these two will fall back and multiply the four so we get two here and then the x there going to be two minus one like this so we also done with the second term let's move on to the third term we have what we have negative five and this zero will fall back and multiply that negative five we're gonna get time zero and then x raised to power 0 minus 1. So 3 times 3 will give us 9. So we have 9 here. And then x raised to power 3 minus 1 will give us x raised to power 2. Plus 2 times 4 is 8. So we get 8 here. And x2 minus 1 will give us 8x. And look at something here. 5 times 0 will give us 0. Everything here will turn to zero, so we have my net zero. And our final answer is x9, x squared plus 8x. Okay, so let's take the final example, the last example here, and then see how we can solve it. It's just uh, similar to this one, but just like it's having a lot of terms. Okay, so let's take that example and see what we can do. We have four. Okay, 4 x raised to power 4 plus 2 x raised to power 3 plus 3 x squared plus 5 x like this. So all that we need to do here is the same thing that the same principle that we apply to solve this question. So the 4 is a constant, so we don't do anything to the constant. So write a 4 here, and you find the derivative of the 4. x raised to the power 4. Here, the 2 is a constant, don't do anything to 2. And you find the gradient function, or the derivative of x cubed. Plus 3 here is a constant, so you find the derivative of x raised to the power 2. Plus your 5. It's also a constant, so we find the derivative of x. Okay, here, the 4 here, we'll fall back and multiply the 4 here. So we get 4 times 4 is 16. And then you write your x here. And this one is 4, you subtract 1 from it. Plus, this 3 here, we'll fall back and multiply the constant 2 here. We're getting 6. And then you write your x, 3 minus 1. Okay. So here, the 2 here will fall back and multiply 3 here, and we're getting 2 times 3 will give us 6, and the write of x is equal to 2, we subtract 1 from it. And then, plus 5 here. And then, what do we do? Here, the exponent here is 1. So the 1 will multiply 5, we get 5. 
and then x is power 1 we subtract 1 also from it like this so 4 minus 1 will give us 3 so we have 16 x to the power 3 here plus 6 3 minus 1 is 2 so we get x to the power 2 plus 6 and then x because 2 minus 1 is x and look at right here this is 5 because x raised to the power 1 minus 1 will give us 0, x to the power 0, and then x to the power 0 is 1. So 1 times 5 is 5, and this is the solution. I know that this tutorial has been of good help to you. So if you like this tutorial, just subscribe to my channel for tutorials like this. Thank you.